Hello, hey, this is Bill. I've had several people asking for uh, information about how the automated starting grid works. So um, I'll show that to you here and hopefully that helps those that are trying to build it themselves. The files are available on the Etsy shop. And so this is a pretty simple build, um, but it includes some mechanics that some people probably aren't gonna be familiar with. So hopefully we can get through that uh, pretty easily. So there's multiple parts. There's a, there's a road bed that has little V's cut out in it. The gray part, <clears throat> there are two sides that get glued to it. This is simply to hide all the mechanism underneath here. Um, and then they just get glued onto the side and then there's a gray piece that gets glued onto the back of the red V notches. Um, this is what holds the marbles in place and the track is like that. This is the servo holder. And then of course we have servos, we have some springs and um, uh, I think that's about it. So anyways, let me show you how it all works together. Once you've glued all those parts and put them together, you need to create this little thing here. And what this is made up of a, <coughs> let's get my measuring stick out here. So this is made up of, let's see, about 15 mil. So these are M3, M3 screws that are 15 millimeters in length. There's a little tiny spring that goes over top of them. There's a nut down in there. You see the nut right there that holds a washer in place. And then that washer just keeps that spring from pressing past the head of the, the screw. And then you just take those and you, and this piece has these little holes that are right here. I don't know if I can get those, but that, that little hole right there is just smaller than three mil. And so when you put the screw in, it's gonna self thread. And then you wanna just put it up so it comes flush. Here, let me see if I can get it in there again. All right, you wanna put it in there so it just comes flush to the surface right here. So let me do that. Um, even if it was a little bit beyond the surface, it's fine. Um, but because the marbles won't actually hit that, that's so close to the corner, the round of the marbles will hit the wall first. But anyways, that's what we do. Just put those four screws in. So now the bed itself is spring loaded. So if you press down on these, you'll see that. I'll do it from this side so you can see. And so that's how that is, I mean, put together. It's really simple. Now the challenging part could be the um, getting these servos in here. So these are high-tech HS81MGs. And the MG stands for Metal Gear. You want to have something that's going to be strong and last. Uh, a lot of servos come with plastic gears. I always recommend getting the metal gears instead. They'll last a lot longer. And then, so you get the, the servos, they get installed with servo screws into this gray piece. Um, and then servos come with their own, what's called a servo horn, which is this piece right here. And then I've custom cut it so that it's rounded like this so that when the servo moves that it it travels nicely um, on this piece of plastic and then now i'll show you how this all gets put together so each servo comes with its own cable like this and then what you'll need to get is a what's called a splitter cable which pretty much takes two to one or one to two, whichever way you want to go. But this is how you're going to get the, the information traveling from your system to both of the servos at the same time. Okay. And then this, um, 
for my purposes, I used a radio control system that I used to use for my RC airplanes. But you might want to consider using what is called a servo controller because that one is just a little knob that you turn left and right and it will move the servos. Um, this one's a little more complicated because it was like a you know hands-free type thing. I could set it up and from a distance I could make it work. You can do the same thing with the servo controller just with a long cable um, to this. But anyways, let me show you what I've got. So this um, is what's called a, re a receiver, an RC radio control receiver. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to plug it in. I think this is what I want. I might have to double check here. It's been a while since I put this together. All right. I'm going to put that in channel five. Um, I think that's the channel I used when doing this. Okay, so now this needs to be powered. So I have a battery, receiver battery right here. And I'm gonna plug that in at the bottom, the very bottom there you'll see there's a seventh channel or uh, an orange B which stands for power. And then finally, we have the radio. <laughs> Sorry, it's kind of big, but anyways, the radio, and I'll turn that power on, and hopefully we'll get a connection here and get this going. And this is where channel 5 is for me, and I'm not getting a connection. Let's, oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm hoping I'm getting all of this on the screen here. All right, so with everything connected now, you know, the battery, the receiver, and now the radio, by flipping this switch, it's going to activate the servos. So, <clears throat> like that. And so if I flip it over, you'll get to see how that works, right? So this guy, if I flip down, it lowers the 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 um the holders there all the way flush to the ground and then you'll want to make sure that this is flush because if not the marbles might get stuck as they exit there um when they when they start the race but that's pretty much how i created that now the difference with using a servo controller is instead of having a switch like this you'll have a knob on a little tiny it's a piece about this big a little controller you have a knob that turns left and right which would do in essence the same thing okay so that is all there is to the construction of this um starting starting grid piece let's see oh there is one more thing so the the clips that we use to connect the track together, um, I, because of the size of the servo I had, I had to notch out a space on them. And so you may have to do that also. Just be aware of that. You know, as, let's put this on, let me show you. All right, so this is the piece that connects the two tracks together. That and this one, I just had to notch them out with an X-Acto blade. So you'll probably want to have to do the same thing right there. And then it still works the same. Show you from the side. Oop. There you go. That's the electronic starting system. So if you want to print that out and get that thing glued together and then get some equipment to make it move. Thank you much.